Hello, and thank you for listening to the sermon for Sunday, March 6, 2016, based on the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15. And now a reading from the Gospel of Luke. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus, and the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them too. So Jesus told them this parable. Jesus said, There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me my share of the property that will belong to me. So the father divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all that he had and traveled to a distant country, and there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him to the fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hands have bread enough to spare? But here I am, dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Please treat me like one of your hired hands. So the younger son sent off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to his dad, Father, I have sinned against you and heaven, and I am no longer worried to be worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Get the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate, for this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And so they began to celebrate. Now the older son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called over one of the slaves and asked, What was going on? And the slave told him, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has got him back safe and sound. Then the older son became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and begged him to come in. But he answered his father, Listen, For all these years I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours comes back, who devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, for the sermon this morning, we're going to use our imagination together. We're going to try a character sermon. And what that means is that you're going to have to listen to me as if I'm not Pastor Ben, but we're going to pretend that I'm the older brother in this story that's often called the prodigal of the parable son, all right? So I'm the older brother in the story. So it kind of like this. Wayne's World throwback. Oh, jeez. Well, good morning. Thanks for inviting me to be with you this morning. I'm glad to be here to share with you my side of the story, or to share with you, maybe I should say, my experience of the story, because the story often focuses on my younger brother, you know, the prodigal son. So I also want to share my story with you because, well, I think there's a chance some of you might be able to relate to me, the older brother in this story. So yeah, my brother, he's the famous prodigal son, which is hardly something to be proud of. The word prodigal simply means someone who is reckless with money, which is not actually a reputable moniker, and it's not something that my family is very proud of. So if my brother is the prodigal one, wild and reckless in his lifestyle, I am the classic firstborn. I am responsible. I follow the rules. I've done everything my father ever asked me to do. I worked hard on the farm all the time. I was the ideal firstborn son. Admittedly, there was one time I was late for curfew, but that was only because I stopped to help someone whose donkey was having trouble on the road. So you get the idea. I'm the good son. And my brother, the prodigal one, well, he's the wild and reckless one. One day... While we were sitting at our table having our evening meeting, my younger brother blurts out to all of us sitting there, Dad, give me my share of the property now. 
my mouth hit the table. I mean, did you hear what my brother just demanded of my dad? Give me my share of the inheritance now. Who demands an advance on, a, an, on an inheritance before their parent dies? My brother, that's who. And you know what I heard in my brother's request was, I can't really sit around and wait for you to die, Dad, so just go ahead and give me my stuff now. I heard him say to me and my dad, you guys are dead to me already. Just give me my stuff, and I'll be on my way. And so my dad did. He split up the property between me and my brother. And so my brother gathered everything that my dad had given him, and he left. No word as to where he was going. No word if he was coming back. Nothing. He just took all of it and left. And this absolutely devastated my father. And I was furious at my brother for what he did. My dad wasn't the same after this. He was present, but he wasn't. It was like he was always wondering what my brother was up to, if he was okay. My dad was always looking down the road that my brother had walked out on. So I was furious at my brother for what he did to my dad. And I kind of missed him, but not really. I was so angry at what he did for writing off my dad, for writing me off as well. And the days went on, the months went on, and we heard nothing from him. We didn't know if he was alive, we didn't know if he was well, or if he was suffering. You know, it's not like today where we can just go on Facebook and see someone's life and that they're okay or what's going on. I can't, couldn't get on Instagram and see what my brother was doing, not that we would have wanted to see what he was doing. But we couldn't text or anything. Occasionally a rumor might trickle back to the house, but we didn't know if he was alive or well or anything. And the days kept going on. Good riddance as far as I was concerned. There was a deep sadness that fell upon our house when he left. It was as if he died. There was the grief, the loss, and the sadness that he was gone. But there was also the hurt and the anger for how he left and what he did to us. So anyway, one day I was out working in the field, you know, as I do, working hard as I do, and I decided it was time to call today. The sun was starting to set, so I started making my way down the path back to the house, and all of a sudden I could hear this music, thumping house music coming from our house. There was a ruckus party going on, and I was trying to make out where in the world is this coming from? Is that actually coming from our house? It didn't make any sense. We hadn't planned any parties. And since my brother had left, there was kind of this cloud that was always just hanging over our house, so there hadn't been much in the way of laughter and partying, no ways ever coming from our house. So I was trying to figure out what was going on. I'm looking all around the house trying to figure out, <coughs> is this actually coming from our house? And as I was making my way down the path, I ran into one of the fellow farm workers, and I asked him what was going on. And he told me the news. He said, your brother's back. And your father has killed the fatted calf. Your, your father's invited everyone over. They're celebrating because your brother is home safe and sound. I probably should have been happy. I probably should have been relieved, but instead I was furious. I shot through the roof. And there was no way I was going to go into that house and join that party. I could not pretend as if he hadn't given us the middle finger as he walked off that day. I could not pretend that he hadn't hurt my father so deeply. I could not pretend that he had just written us off. I could not pretend that he had wasted everything that my dad had worked so hard for and that now he was coming back to beg for more. And I couldn't get past the fact that we were throwing him a party, like this was some sort of hero's welcome, that he had been given some hug and kiss and we were joining all the neighbors together from my stance. When he came home that day, the door should have been shut in his face. So I'm outside, refusing to go in, kicking the dirt, and my dad comes out and he pleads with me, begs me to come and join the party. And I admit it, I lost my temper and I started yelling at my dad. I started saying things to my dad like, I've been here every single day working for you. Never once have I missed a day at work. Never once have I begrudgingly said no or anything. It's just, I've been here every single day, and where's my party? When have you ever killed a fatted calf for me? When have you ever struck up the band for me? 
See, it just didn't seem right to me. Now, you might have noticed in Jesus' telling of this story that he never says whether or not I joined the party. He never says whether or not I went in. I still remember that day so clearly. Right? My dad comes out and he makes his case and he says to me, we have to celebrate. Your brother who was lost has been found. Who was dead is now alive. We have to celebrate. And so my dad went back into the festivities and I stayed outside. And I stayed outside with the question of, do I join the party or not? I mean, what would you have done? Right? If you were in my shoes, you see my quandary, right? My brother, who would hurt my family so deeply, is back. And now we're throwing him this giant party, which to me did not seem right. I couldn't just go in and pretend like it was no big deal. Like I could just go in and eat, drink, and be merry, and give him a hug and say, welcome home. So what do I do? Do I go in and do that? Or do I stand outside and make a, a principled stance that it's not right? You don't treat each other this way. And you don't get some sort of big hero's homecoming when you come home. What to do? <clears throat> Plus, it all seems so unfair. He wastes our family's resources, makes a fool of himself, and then he gets a giant hug and a kiss and a party when he returns. And me, I had never left home. I had been working hard at the farm my whole life long. And what reward do I get? More daily work. None of this seemed fair to me. Now here's the thing I've learned about God over the years. You know, my father in this story. He's always going to throw a big party for any and all who return home. God will run down the road to embrace the person while they're still far off, give them a hug and a kiss, kill the fatted calf, get the best band in town, call all the neighbors together, and God's always going to say something like, we had to celebrate, for he or she had been lost and now is found. And that's pretty good news for people like my brother, you know, folks who went off and lived a wild lifestyle and all of a sudden decided to come home. But for people like me, you know, the older son, the responsible ones, the good and nice people who've never gone off the rails, who've always done what they were supposed to do, well, this is kind of hard to accept. So we're left with the ca- that question of, do we stay outside or do we join the party? And I can also share this with you. Because of God's gift of Jesus Christ, there are always people being welcomed home by God that you don't like. People that may have hurt you or hurt someone that you love. People are always having a party thrown for them by God. People who have made a mess of their life, who've done everything they weren't supposed to do. And this is God's gift through Christ. And then there's people like me, right? Working hard every day, doing what we're supposed to do, following all the rules. And then we come home from a long day of being responsible. And the house is bumping. There is a huge party going on inside because someone who is lost has been found. And what do we do? Do we stand outside or do we go inside? Well, because of Jesus Christ, there is always going to be a party going on because God is always gracious and forgiving and loving and always quick to celebrate. So on that day, I stayed outside so long. I stood outside feeling smug, feeling angry, self-righteous in my indignation, that I stayed outside so long that when I finally came in, my father looked at me and said, strike up the band, kill the fatted calf because my older son who was lost in his pride has been found. My older son who is dead in his self-righteousness is now alive. My older son who was outside is now inside. Strike up the band. For this, we need to celebrate. It turns out I was lost too. Turns out I was also dead. Differently than my brother, but nonetheless lost. But thankfully, God our Father is always quick to celebrate, quick to forgive, quick to welcome, which is good news for people like my brother.